I'm Sonia B, and welcome back to another episode of Intimate Conversations. And I have a special guest here with me, Sean. You doing? Introduce yourself. Tell them what you do. Um, my name is uh, Sean Thompson. Uh, Sean Sean the Don on all social media. Uh, I am a mental health counselor, and I'm also, I guess, a relationship mental health influencer on TikTok. Oh. I love it. We got a lot to unpack, so Sorry, let's sorry. dive right in. Um, communication. Uh, let's get okay. to it. <laughs> so when people come to you, is communication one of the biggest problems? Always. Uh, it's usually the biggest space of any issues in any relationship, whether it be friendships, dating, parents, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, okay. I a lot. Effect of communication. Uh -huh. what, is it? what is it to you? How do you define it? I'll give you the dictionary first. Uh, okay. Effective communication is two-way communication between one party and another party, whether it be however many people you decide, but letting whatever your issue is be fully heard and understood, and then a rebuttal coming from the opposing side. Their reasons are being understood and their problems, and then trying to come to a middle ground from whatever the issues are presented on both sides. That's effective communication. Okay. Great. I love it. Now, the real, the right. Give us your version. The of real it. is, I right, I talk, you listen for a bit. You talk, I listen for a bit. Let's figure this shit out at the end. <laughs> just like that, that's like what, let's that's, just that's what let's do just it. do it. Um, when you get people when they come to you and they say, "I have a hard time communicating," mm. or a hard time opening up, where do you think that stems from? And then how do you assist people with getting on a path to opening up? I always ask them. When they were younger, were they able to openly present their their emotions in their household? When they were growing up, were they op were they able to say, "I'm upset, I'm mad," you know? I didn't like that you did this. Were you able to say those things when you were a kid? No, did you have to hold that all in until you graduated, went out of your mama's house? Of course, you don't know how to, right? It's taking taking criticism, being able to hear things that you did wrong and not fire back, but then also being able to eloquently and you know, effectively communicate how you're feeling to somebody without the extras thrown on top of it. Uh, people really struggle with that, um, especially when their feelings are involved. So, uh, the way that I usually talk to people about getting better at it is I have them write out what they want to say before they have a conversation with somebody. Write it out. And then while you're talking to them, have it handy so you can see where you were trying to go with the conversation. And how far it's veered so you can bring yourself back. Because um, once you just start talking. Emotions take over. And <laughs> All of a now wait, names. if I show up with a piece of paper, like I wanted to say, I am here to present like <laughs> feelings. Like I'm just asking for the other party. And it's going to be like it's scripted. Now, now, here's the thing. Will they feel like it's scripted? Maybe. But is it effective for you mm -hmm. to convey your message? People are very much too concerned with how I'm going to look. Okay. How I'm going to look, what the other person is going to think of me, how I'm presenting, will I look dumb? You got to get out of that because if you're trying to come to a resolution, you looking dumb for two minutes while you're presenting whatever, as long as they got what you were trying to say and you effectively communicated between them, as long as the end result is what you wanted, why do you care if for those two minutes while you're saying whatever you said, you looked a little silly? Yeah. <laughs> I get it. I get it. That makes total sense. Yeah. So... People receive communication in different ways, too, right? Absolutely. And so when you think of it in, like, the dating space, what what would a conversation go like if you and I were dating and you wanted to know how I received my, or what was the best way for us to communicate, like? So the way that I would do it is, okay, so we'll play it out. Okay. Hey, babe. Hey. I have a quick question. Um, last time that we got into a bit of an argument, it didn't really go the way that I feel was healthy for us. So I wanted to ask, when you've had issues in your past relationships, how have they gone when you tried to talk about them? My partner shut me down. Your partner shut you down. How did you feel? Terrible. Like yeah. I wasn't hurt. Terrible like you wasn't hurt. Okay. Last time that we had an argument, you ended up shutting me down, right? Mm -hmm. Before I could shut you down. Of course. I want you to know that I'm not here to shut you down. I'm trying to listen, but you have to give me the opportunity to. Can't shut me up before I have a chance. So next time we get into it, here's how I want it to go. I want you to say whatever you have to say, how you feel, and I'm going to listen fully. I'm not going to cut you off. I'm not going to interrupt you. But at the end of that, I want you to hear what I have to say. 
I would like for you to try not to cut me off, not to run away, not to do any of those things. And then at the end, we can figure out what we're going to do about it. But the way that we've been going about it isn't the way that I want to keep going about it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it just been played out. <laughs> it was a whole script. <laughs> you know, I love that because sometimes people just need to see. And I know it's easier um, said than done. Mm-hmm. So for sure. Um, I need help. This uh this this calm like presentation that I bring like in that little role play. Mm-hmm. I even try to I try to bring that even when I'm upset, frustrated. I try to bring myself to a place of neutrality so I'm able to hear you. Cuz if I'm thinking in my emotion, you're not going to get anything out of me but that emotion. So let me ask you this. So let's say we would have had a heated argument. Mm-hmm. Um a technique that I like to do is If I get overwhelmed or you get overwhelmed, we say, hey, I want time to process this. Mm -hmm. Um, However, the person that left and said they needed time to process for a few hours a day, they're the one that has to come back and initiate. Yeah. You think that's effective? I think that's effective. Um, One, you're letting them have their freedom, Mm -hmm. wanting to walk away. They're needing a second. You're letting them have that. But also you're putting the onus on them like, okay, I'll let you have your freedom. But now when it comes to resolution, you're taking initiative, bringing that in. So, yes, I fully, fully agree with that. Okay. I'm a fix it now type person. And I've had to learn that everybody isn't. A lot of and a lot of people get upset when they like, no, yeah. I want to talk about it right now. Right. Like, I no, I don't want to wait two hours, one day. Like, let's talk it out now. <laughs> but it's because I get anxious. Mm. You, you, me and you fighting. You ain't got into that. You're my home where you're supposed to be. Right. So this shit ain't right at my home. This shit ain't right with us. I can't sleep. I can't. I can't right. function normally. So I'd rather address whatever issues that we have, so that my home don't feel like it's in chaos. Makes a lot of sense. You know I- what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I gotta understand that isn't it? Ain't everything ain't about me. Relationships having to be two people interweaving their lives together. So in order for me to be able to do that, I have to be able to step back when I need to. Yes. Something I had to discuss with you. Let's get into this topic. Um, I feel like there is a very thin line between reassuring your partner and feeding their insecurities. Yeah. Let, let's, let's, let's draw the line in the sand if we can today. Let's try. You <laughs> like we don't need way more time than this, so let's let's try. Like um, like even in the sense of out here, people wanting to share locations with their partner. Now, yeah. if it's a safety thing, I'm gonna be out and you know late, and he's like, hey, I just wanna you know make sure you make it home safe, whatever. Make sure you good. Um, and make sure you're good. Uh-huh. Then that's okay. I feel like that's perfectly fine. But Mm -hmm. having your location on 24-7 is not reassuring my partner. It's feeding their insecurity. And I fully, fully, fully believe that as well. What do you need to know where I'm at for 24, like 24 hours a day? You can just pick up the phone, look anytime where I'm at. Oh, she went to Target. Like, So if if the relationship is built off of a foundation of distrust, where is it going to go? I'm going to spend the entire relationship proving myself to you even though I haven't disproven myself, right? Now, some people will do that. Mm-hmm. So some people will fully, fully agree. I, I see it all the time on social media. It's like, well, if this upsets you, then I'm, I'm not going to do it. If you want my password, then I'll give it right to you if it makes you feel better. You want to know where I am? Location share 24-7 is whatever you want. And I want people, at least I would like people to understand that being in a relationship with somebody does not automatically mean you're giving up all of your autonomy to the other person. That is not what that means. Mm -hmm. Like, just because I want to be with you, that does not mean that I'm giving up everything that makes me myself in order to be with my my, I'm I'm an independent man. Right. (laughs) I like to go and do whatever I'm going to go and do when I want to go and do it. Reporting to somebody. I was in the military for 10 years. That time is over with. Like, with. (laughs) That's it for me. (laughs) You feel me? I'm I'm on my my stripes and everything up. I'm a civilian. I'm an ag like it. Right. You feel me? If I got it, if I want to go, I can tell you and ask you. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I'll let you know, hey, baby, I'm going to this on this day with my homies. But asking you permission to go? That's different. It's a little slow. Yeah. Slow for that. Why do you think people would even agree to just 
surrender that type of um, independence or privacy. Some people call it privacy. Like you need my location. You want my social <laughs> passwords. Why would why in your professional opinion do people even agree to that? The want for love is far and beyond the want for autonomy. People don't want to be by themselves. So if I don't want to be by myself enough, I don't mind that this person is taking away that little bit. Because I don't like being by myself with myself all the time anyway. It's so I don't care. I don't mind. You want to know where I'm at? Cool. Just having you around makes me feel better. So if you're around all the time, you in my business, at least that's how I calculate what love is. You love me because you care so much about what I'm doing all the time. Now, in a healthy sense, not so much, I would say, because everybody needs their own element of themselves in their life. And once you start taking that away mm -hmm. and you start fully melding your life with somebody else or having what they are overshadow who you are, you're more hiding in your partner, okay. living your life with them. That makes sense. So let me get into this. Um, you've probably heard it a million times. Let's get into these attachment styles. Mm. Oh, Lord have mercy. Mm. So, <clears throat> speaking from a person that used to, past tense, it's gone, it's not here anymore. Having an anxious attachment style. Mm. In those moments, I thought, I'll just get with somebody else that has an anxious attachment style, and it'll be a match made in heaven. That's gross. <laughs> That's gross. That's the worst because mistake you could have made. <laughs> and they'll want to be in my skin all day, and I'll want to be in their skin all day, and, and you know, it's it's just going to work out perfectly. It canceled out, didn't it? It canceled out, didn't it? Look at me. Look at me. It didn't it? It was, it canceled out. It was real bad. It was real bad. It was real bad. Yeah, be careful what you ask for. Yeah, it's not what you think it is. That's that's not what you want. It's not what you think it is. Oh yeah. my goodness! In those situations, you kind of need opposites. Yeah, and also, people lean as working in both fields. Right, I work in the mental health field and the relationship field. Relationship coaches mm -hmm. like to throw out mental health terms a lot, incorrectly. I know this is your pet peeve right <laughs> here. Correctly. <laughs> They like to throw it out. They like to use terms like gaslighting, um, love bombing. Um, they like to throw out attachment styles without knowing the deeper, you know, the deeper reasoning behind them. And I just want to say, stop trying to put a label on everything. Just because you like reassurance, that doesn't make you anxious. That doesn't mean that you have an anxious attachment style. Just because you don't like to be around somebody all the time doesn't mean that you have a distant attachment style. Right. It's just... You have different traits and it's thrown in. You don't stick. Labels don't usually stick to people that often, that well, perfectly, because we're not all one thing. But we try to label ourselves as things mm -hmm. to give people heads up or to belong to a certain group. Right. Like, hey, I have anxious attachment style. Just so, so I got to be in this category, right? But mine and yours are different. Right? Mm -hmm. So why would we put a label on it to try to make people treat us in a certain box when what works for you might not work for me. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a whole lot of sense. It's probably not. So just like you thought, <laughs> anxious attachment with anxious attachment, that works. But you, the reassurance that you need, they don't. The reassurance yeah. they need, you can't give because you're looking for reassurance to give reassurance. You needed it first, but they need it first. It was all bad. Just right. know it was all bad. Right, right. <laughs> I was like, how is this going to, like, after I did the smoke settled, I was like, what was I thinking? What was happening? What? What? Why? What was I going with this? I have no... Fr I was like, wow, mind blown. And usually we don't have that type of clarity until we get out of it. So where do the attachment style stem from? I think it came from childhood. Uh, I, I think most issues manifest themselves first within the household. Um, I mean, I didn't speak freely like for myself. Uh, I grew up without my father. And grew up in a household with my mother. And my mother uh, was not the most, like, lovey-dovey, touchy person. So she tried to, to raise me as she thought my dad would. Mm. So she gave me, like, fist bumps and church hugs. And, you know, like, little punch in the chest when I did stuff right. And stuff like, you know, the attaboys. The like, go ahead, sport. <laughs> yeah, to, add, to bring me up tough. Right? right, right. But the thing with that is you usually have a counterbalance in your mother, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you usually have... 
when you get the Hattaboys and the good and all that stuff, you go to your mom and then you get the hugs and kisses and all that stuff. I didn't get the hugs and kisses, right? So now that I'm older, I crave those. Gotcha. Right, from the person that I'm with. Very, very touchy feely. Very touchy feely. And I it came from me not getting that from my mom. That doesn't come from that with everybody all the time. Mm-hmm. Okay? But I would say most manifest in the household first. So would you say your love language is touch? Um, touch and uh, and uh, acts of service. Touch and acts of service. Mm-hmm. Give me a kiss before you leave, and I don't know, wash the dish before you leave. Th- th- set. <laughs> <That'll do it. laughs> I'm set. I'm super easy. You know what I'm saying? Like if I, if you know, I came in from little work late. You know, have whatever I need to wear for the next morning. Just out. Give me a kiss before you leave. I'm on cloud nine for the rest of the day. Okay, so let me ask you this. We know we shouldn't be. Probably with the, we shouldn't be with the same attachment styles. Right, right, right. But what I have discovered, just the interviews with the psychologist, yeah, and the the interviews with the psychologist, the interviews with um, relationship coaches and therapists, and for those of you that don't know, um, our sister company Intimate App is launching a dating app this summer, Absolutely. which we co-created with a psychiatrist, relationship coaches, et cetera, we tend to naturally give love in the way we want to receive it. Mm-hmm. So I think those are compatible patch, compatible matches. There. Yeah. How I, go. However, mm-hmm. you end up, people don't, people ask what their love languages are. Mm-hmm. They don't pay as much attention to them as they probably should. So you, go out, so you go out on a date, right? You ask somebody, like, oh, what's your love language? And I just happen to say, oh, it's, you know, words of affirmation and quality time, right? I ask you what yours are. You say physical touch and acts of service. Mm-hmm. And we're just like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, those are my, like, three and four. They're not my top two, but this is whatever. And we kind of glaze past that. <laughs> like, oh, okay, you told me that. I told you that. Cool. We don't really pay as much attention to it as we should because further down into the relationship, they just told you theirs are not yours. Mm. But you glazed past it. It was just a fun fact, right? Like, what's your favorite animal? I like wolves. Great. Cool. (laughs) Moving on. (laughs) Next question. You know, favorite position. (laughs) What are you saying? (laughs) It just goes from one to the other. So when people tell you those things, be be more intent with your listening so if somebody can tell you exactly what they're going to be mm-hmm. like moving forward but you laced over it i'm telling you i like to touch and i like access service so i'm going to touch you a lot i might not tell you all the time oh i love right. you you're the most beautiful woman in the world i can't meet every day i wake up next to you it's like a whole new day right like, <laughs> like i might not do might, that. Uh, yeah <laughs> i might not do that but the fact that you know every time i move past you mm-hmm. i touch you i rub your arm slap your butt Rub my hand down. You know, I give you a kiss every time I see you. That's me expressing those words and actions. Yeah. But and you're not then, receiving it that way. And <laughs> then if um if they're they have different love languages, I guess the person should have a follow up question like, Do you are you able are you able, capable, and have the capacity to love me in my love language? Are you willing to learn? Man. Yeah, I I I did it for a joke, but I made a pamphlet, mm-hmm. and it's like um it's like an intake packet if you've ever gone to like a psychologist yeah or like yeah. to a medical uh but it's a relationship intake. Oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> it's a relationship intake, and in the relationship intake, it has a question like that, like so what are your love languages, and then you mark them top two. Mm-hmm. Is it if. Yours are not your partners. Are you, do you feel like you have the capacity, or what are your weakest areas within the love languages? And you can look at that theoretically and see it like, oh, I love to touch. This person hates being touched. <clears throat> what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do about that? <laughs> right? Are you able to touch me mm-hmm. in order for me to feel like that, or is just sitting in a room good enough for you? Right. Sitting in a room isn't good enough for me. So I feel like sometimes when you approach relationships and conversations, they should be a little bit, they should be, have a lot more intent to them. Yes, absolutely. All right. What else do couples come to you for? Man, they come, I get a lot, man. Uh, <laughs> as far as relationship counseling goes, mm-hmm. 
the biggest thing that I get, because I, the biggest part of people that come to relationship counseling are usually within the ages of like 25 to 34 mm. in between that, because that's the change. That's the shift. They usually started dating when they were 21, 22. Yeah. And then once it gets to about 25, 26, 27, they're getting into their adult years. They're figuring out who they actually are. They change or move in those directions. And then you figure out, oh, we don't. We don't mesh like that. What I wanted at 21 is not what I want at 30. Exactly. 31, right. And you're not mm-hmm. growing with me mm-hmm. necessarily. So let me, either we're going to figure it out, which in a lot of their heads is either you change, you fix it, or I'm out. Mm. It's usually one person that's like that. It's, whether it's the man or the woman, it's like, okay, I figured out who I am. You're not what I want, so either... You change it or I'm out of here. Wow, that's tough. Rough. That is tough. Because the other person is usually despondent, right? It's it's like what I usually get is like, oh, they're not the person that they used to be. Mm -hmm. Of course not. Nobody's the same as they, nobody's the same 5, 10, 15 years later. You shouldn't be. Right. You shouldn't be. Or else there's a problem. If I was the same dude that I was when I was 21, at 29, I, th- th- there was no growth. Right. Nothing happened. Like what? Right. That's a that's a problem. So the fact that you're looking for me to be 21 year old me is a little. It's weird. That's wild. We're supposed to, we're supposed to be growing, and hopefully, ideally, we grow together. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you do grow apart, and people hold on to memories. They hold on to hopes. Yep. The the idyllic love, right? The idea of who they wish this person could be, instead of who's standing in front of you. So let me ask you this. Do you ever take them and say, hey, I think there needs to be some individual counsel because <laughs> the lack of self-development mm. and individual work mm. has a lot of people in a chokehold? Yes, I always I always recommend individual counseling because um, you come in as a couple, people change, they, shift, mm-hmm. they hide, you know, they don't give everything that they possibly can for fear of upsetting the other person. Uh, for fear of ending the relationship prematurely by saying the truth of however they feel. Cause they, and, and then they got to go home with that person. Yeah. You, you're not going home with that. So. I'm just sitting here listening. Once y'all leave, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got to hear the awkward conversations, the awkward ride home. Right. I, I was thinking about it. That's exactly what I was thinking. That drive home, home is like. Weird. It's like, so, oh, that's how you've been feeling that whole time, huh? So you really think I'm dirty and you just wanted to tell him that I'm dirty, <laughs> that I don't pick my panties enough. <laughs> Well, I know you. If you hated that so much, you could have told me. (laughs) He's a complete stranger. My panties, Jonathan. My panties. (laughs) That is hilarious, but I'm sure you hear it all. It's 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 panties. It's it's. uh, I've had like, oh, she used to she used to have these cute these cute underwear that she wore from time. Now she wear the same two, and then sometimes they don't even be matching no more. Wow, that bothers you, but it bothered him. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, you know, she, 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 she used to, she used to bust it open at least three, four times a week. Now, now I'm lucky to get it once a month. Who? Okay, let's touch that. Let's touch it. Do Maybe they come? To, it, it is intimate conversation. Somebody ain't getting touched. They, <laughs> somebody ain't getting touched. Sorry, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Look, how many of them come to you and they are hiding their sexual desires from their spouse? Ooh. Let's let's get into no. it. I never get those in session. Never. No. Never in the group sessions. Never. They always come out in the individual sessions. Mm. Always. And it's just, it's like, man, I just, I really wanted to do this, but I'm afraid to ask her because we've never done it before. And I asked, like, what are you afraid of? It's like, well, we're, she, I'm afraid she's going to wonder where I got that from because we never did it. So why do you want me to do it all of a sudden? Maybe he saw it, you know, yeah. on a movie or something. Sites are free. Right. Mm-hmm. They are. So I'm <laughs> like, why do I have to justify where I learned it? Right. The sites are free. So there's a fear of expression, mm. whether it be emotional, sexual. There's a lot of fear of expression through fear of judgment. And I feel like your home the person that you build your home with, that should be the freest space that you have in life. I couldn't agree more. That should be the freest space. I had, I have a patient 
and he, you know, he, he his wife passed away. Mm. And uh, me and him were just going on a drive. I was taking him to another appointment he had. He was talking to me about it. And he's like, you know why I never remarried? They why? Tell me. He's like, you know, me and my wife used to explore things and try different things together and bring in partners. And, you know, we used to, I'd throw out an idea and we'd just do it. And we'd act like we were strangers at a bar and pick up on each other. And, you know, we 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 do all these different things together. And nothing that I ever threw out to her or anything that she ever threw out to me was too much. It's like she always thought about how I would be pleased. I always thought about how she would be pleased. And I've never found anybody that cared that much about me being fulfilled. So I'd never married again. Wow. And my jaw just kind of dropped because I'm thinking like, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever had somebody care that much to where my, my fulfillment was so important to them that I could say whatever. And they were just down because it would make me happy. You missing out? Huh. I'll trust. I know. You hey, anybody out there? <laughs> <laughs> Is this the camera? Is this the camera? <laughs> and you, you missing out? Oh, I, I I get it. That's the way it's supposed to. It's that's supposed the way it should be. Should be. Um, and then you, I'm sure he never had any issues or came to you and was like, oh, I just feel like the sex life, the the fire just fizzled out. Right. There's no spark there. No, they had spark. They, they had created spark. it. They tried new stuff. They were and they never open. Let it die. They never let it die. They were completely committed to each other's pleasure. I love that. I love that too. Yeah. We get emotional. Yeah. Just talking about it. Yeah. You want to? You want a tissue? <laughs> you gonna sit to that? <laughs> oh my goodness! And then, um, when you get the women individually, yeah, they hiding their toys. They not saying what oh. they want to say. Oh yeah, I know. Oh they my god! Toys, I, the, toys is crazy. And and, the, and I'm I'm like that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard of. Oh yeah, no, I haven't. Have Why? It. Because are they thinking the men are going to be intimidated by the toys? Yes. I had an individual who had her all her toys out in the shed that he built. He built a shed, but it was supposed to be his tool shed. But he wasn't a handyman. He just built it, so he doesn't go in there ever. So she has a shed out there. She had a little cot that she made up out there she has little candles and stuff he just never goes he goes to work she goes out into her little shed with her voice. hidden batman panel of <laughs> sex toys a whole, <laughs> Lights a whole bunch of candles like like a like a like a religious <laughs> altar and just goes at it it's a spiritual experience I'm intrigued. <laughs> that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying crazy shit i've ever heard in my life but wow. it's because it's because she bought the toys in the first place because her husband wasn't Mm-hmm. fulfilling her in those ways and she didn't want to tell him because she thought it was gonna hurt his feelings so she would usually go out to the shed after either he was at work or they would do whatever they were doing he'd finish and then she'd go out <gasps> and sleep and light her little candles and say her seven hail marys go at it <laughs> wow <laughs> so but in your experience will most men will they ex- if let's be honest if we told them that they were not doing X, Y, and Z, and they were not satisfying us, it would probably crush a a lot of a lot egos. Of, a lot of ego. Um, it would it would definitely crush a lot of ego. Any way to soften the blow? Yeah. Um, it's the way that you come at it. Instead of being like, you don't, you don't, you don't love me good enough. <laughs> you know, I, need, I love the way you mumbled that. I need instead of doing it like that just being like hey babe i have something i want to uh, try out mm-hmm. in the room. i want you to try to do this you know right because i just i feel like it might be good and it would really turn me on if you really did this for me mm. put it it's like teenagers teenagers buy into ideas when you make it feel like it's their idea mm-hmm. men will buy into it if you make it feel like well i be more this for you if you tried this for me right 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 Right? you just you gotta put it out there like well you know i feel like it really turned me did this you mean hell yeah Yeah, right right he'd be all for it oh go ahead buy it go ahead buy it we'll try it out (laughs) next oh my goodness that is crazy i'm I'm still i'm still over here mind blown about the shed like i'm like that's one of the crazy that's one of the crazy stories i've ever heard that's wild that is really wild yeah i don't know what you're doing that 
Oh, I, oh, she's fine. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> she got the other women at home. Like, I want one of those. I want a. I want a she shed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I think I'm worried about the wrong person in that relationship. I hope her husband's okay. Yeah, <laughs> my yes, we hope he's okay. As a as a as a counselor, like hearing all this stuff, it really helps you like fill in your own potholes. Like as I'm a partner, sure. like I hear these stories and then I understand. Like, oh shit! I... So let me ask you this: dating when you're dating. Do you get people that are like, you do what for a living? Mm-hmm. He might try to hit me with the Jedi mind tricks. Because oh, I met a therapist sorry. and he he checked all the boxes and I was like, I don't have anything to hide, but it's just, I feel like I would be evaluated all the time. He would be like calling me out on things I didn't even <laughs> consciously know. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I show you how it goes? Sure. Okay. I'm just going to pretend that I'm sitting across. And okay. This is my date. Okay. okay. So, oh, you a therapist. Okay. Diagnose me. Go ahead. Just from what you know, diagnose me. I got to say something like, oh, I don't really diagnose the people that I'm dating. No, no, no. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Just tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. I got anxiety. I got depression. <laughs> tell me. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> It's, at the dinner table? At the dinner table. It's like the first date. It's like, how? It's like, okay, so I'm feeling like you have major depressive disorder, uh, a little bit of bipolar. I'm feeling a little bit of schizophrenic, the way that you keep looking over there. Like, there's nobody over there, sweetheart. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> why do you want me? Oh, my why goodness. Why do you these things out? The, the thing is, people think that we're analyzing them. I turn my analytical brain off when I'm dating. I try to. Because if if I'm looking at everybody looking for warning signs, we all have them. So it's always going to spark my radar if I'm thinking that way. Mm-hmm. So I just try to get to know you guys. And that's what he said. He was like, I'm just like any other man. I was like, sure you are. Now, do we catch on to shit a little bit quicker? Sure. Sure. Of course. Are the red signs, are the red, uh, red flags a little bit more red? A little bit for us? Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, something that probably took your ex six months to figure out. Probably <laughs> take me about two weeks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it don't mean I'm smart enough to avoid them. Right. Because right. therapists be getting in bad situations too. Therapists need therapists. I know. I see mine. Thank you, George. I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I got, I got a therapist that I see all the time. But it's just because we do this doesn't mean that we have it all figured out. Right. You know? And in our personal lives, a lot of that psychological bias is cut out mm-hmm. we can't we can't look at ourselves objectively because we're not we're not bred to look at ourselves objectively. we have an idealistic idea of ourselves mm. and so with that comes a lot of plot holes so we still have issues too and i'm so glad you said I, they heard it from the therapist that said a therapist have therapists mm-hmm. black and brown people mm-hmm. we all need a therapist they, absolutely and because they tend to think it's um what what do we say in the black community? Somebody mentions ther- therapy. I'm not crazy. Or as my mom used to say, that's just the devil. Woo. That ain't nothing that, but the devil. That we just gonna pray about it's it. It's got that spirit on it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Go on down there on Sunday with Pastor Johnson. He'll pray over He gonna pray over. Oh, yup. And you gonna be okay. I was still sad. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was I was just sad, but I had a good praise and worship. Yup. Yup. You know? yep. oh. I want to remove that stigma. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not um only for crisis management. Like absolutely, uh, I I thought that me being who I am and doing what I'm doing is only because a black man, four black men, four black women, you know, a person who's came from those situations. The, I didn't grow up in a great neighborhood. Mm-hmm. It's my little girl, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. It's not the best area, right? Grew up around there, seen a lot, been through a lot. And instead of to come out on the other side, which is probably going to be either dead or in jail, I decided to be who I needed when I was a kid, who was a, a grown man, who had been through some shit, who was able to talk to the younger people, talk to other individuals who were struggling and give them something, something, whether it's help, whether it's just a, a push in the right direction. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do that. So that's the whole reason I even do it. Um, starting doing TikTok, I, I've been talking to myself in my car for years. 
I just happened to do so this. So what's nothing new to you? <laughs> yeah, I just happened to do this this time. That's the only difference. Um, and it just happened to work out for me. Uh, but the only reason I've even continued to do it because I don't like the attention. It bothers me. I don't like the social media attention. It bothers me. If there was no social media, we wouldn't have found you. I know. Still bothers. I understand. I understand. It still bothers me. Um, all that, but the the amount of people that have inboxed, messaged, and just been like, I needed to hear that. That helps me. Good. Keep doing better. what you're doing. We we need you to keep doing what you're doing. We I thank you for doing what you're doing. You. So look, if anything resonated with the audience, how can they reach you? Do you do virtual? Um, can you you do clients virtually? So I am working on that. I'm working on getting my own little thing going with that. Uh, right now, I work for um, the Veterans Camp Veterans okay. Center in Columbus, Ohio. Um, so I work strictly with veterans right now. Okay. And then, uh, but as far as life coaching and things like that. You can inbox me. You can message me on TikTok or Instagram. Uh, Sean Sean Dawn. That's S H A W N two times D O. I mean D A D O N. Sean Sean Dawn. Uh, I'll get back to you. I ain't nobody special, so I I, I respond to my inbox. <laughs> you are somebody special. With that, <laughs> with that, you definitely are. Well, I am glad you came on Intimate Conversations. It has been a pleasure hosting you. Yes, Hello. honey. That's right. I am Sonia B, and you can find me on Instagram at Sonia underscore B underscore. And this episode was sponsored by our sister company, Intimate App. See you next week.